Many of you probably already saw this game, so forgive, but it's going to be pretty rare to find replays that aren't already cast. But I didn't get to see it, so I really want to see what's up, how this is played out. I don't do that. I need to actually pause this. <laughs> there we go. You're also very active at chat, which you don't have to be. Oh, I don't know about that. I think you have to be. And I think it is helpful. Like, if I if I was playing like this, like at what I was anyways, probably... Hey, Kevin. All right. So, um, you know, this is where I cut for YouTube. Three, two, one. Okay, I will be casting Mana vs. Specialist is from the WCS Austin Replay Pack, which is available on the WCS website as well as many other places, I'm sure. Um, I got the the order of maps here. I know this. I know how this ends. I know the spoiler. Many of you probably do out there who's watching this right now, and it'll be put up on YouTube. So all those watching on YouTube, you might know it as well. But just in case you don't, then enjoy. Apparently, it was a very good series. Mono was having a bit of a uh, a run up until this point. You know, he was. Uh, already exceeding expectations by getting to the round of eight where he defeated Snoot. And now this is the round of four. Um, so uh, I I didn't get to catch exactly what was going on. What, you know, what Wheaties he ate that day. But I'm excited to see how he played this out. Um, and talk a little bit about Special's Curse of the Round of Four, too. Let's start the game. In the top left is the Red Zaren. He is Special. And in the bottom right, as the blue Protoss, it is Mana. So yeah, Special has a bit of a, of a round of four curse, is what people are, are, are you know, officially dubbing it, I suppose. It was like a coincidence until it was, you know, third, fourth, fifth time, and now it's just, it's a bit of a curse for him. He gets to the round of four, he looks about as good as ever, right? And Special's a very neat player to watch. He's a foreigner, you know, he's on Korean, but he does play a lot like the Koreans and is just usually very, very on point. Macro, micro, you name it, different build variety. Can be a fun player to watch too. He has some builds in common with TY and all that. Um, but then for some reason, no matter who he faces in the round of four, whether it's, you know, whatever race or whatever player, someone he's beaten in the past, someone he's always lost in the past, he just, he gets stumped and it's really quite odd. Um, I don't know if it's a, it's a mental thing for him or it just it's always coincidental. I mean, I think in this circumstance, you could say that the unfortunate uh, case is that he faced Mana when he was on a on a tear. And, you know, is he going to actually be able to, to get past his round of four? Spoiler alert. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't actually get past his round of four. Uh, curse at Austin. Maybe when it comes to Valencia, he'll be able to do that. Maybe when it comes to Montreal, he'll be able to do it. Maybe, just maybe it'll be BlizzCon at the end of the year, which he did make, you know, last year, so he could do it again this year. But it was not this tournament, so rip. But yeah, uh, Mana was on a tear, and looks like he is going for what I feel like a lot of foreigners still do, but maybe the Koreans that were trying to give it up which is the frontal wall off. I'm actually going to go ahead and build a Zealot. I mean, this was Nexus after time and X-Core, so really wanting to try and get some damage done early on and throw special off, which he might feel the necessity to do. Uh, Mana did uh, get interviewed shortly after Austin. I mean, he was interviewed on stage every single time, right? But he was also interviewed uh, by Team Liquid, by Wax, I believe, and he had you know some, some fun things to say about his performance. You know, how he didn't expect... Um, I think it was against uh, Cyril that he was like, I'm just going to look for practice. And against Snoot, he maybe had more of a of expectation to win. Oh, he tried to jump over the grenade. Uh, because he does oftentimes beat Snoot. There's some like kind of like teammate mental block there sometimes. But for Special, I mean, this is going to be a big surprise. Special is usually a very good player. Mana's TVP in the past hadn't looked so good. But, uh, this is really an obnoxious way to start things off, and if you think you're not going to be able to perform well in this matchup, then trying to get the Terran to start off a little bit less, few less SCVs, few uh, mistakes here and there, so Plot Depot's maybe a little bit off, and maybe they don't remember to scout for the Stargates, which Acid Plan is a really, really, really good map for this. Um, then suddenly you've gotten yourself a lead against someone maybe you didn't expect to win against. 
And Acid Plant, why is this a good map for this type of aggression? I mean, the Zealot obviously was dealt with, right? Didn't deal that much damage. You got one SCV, um, certainly got some lost mining time, but Mana did give up a Nexus at an appropriate time to do that, so it's like give and take. But what it really does, which is really obnoxious, is that you know, there's already a forward wall off because he literally walled this off. And so you send the Zealot through, that's all, that's all great, but then the Reaper should never be able to get into the main. And it's not going to get into the main because it'd have to go past the wall off, as we saw. And then this is the the, the, the closest Reaper hop-up spot. Acid Plant, absolutely terrible for Reapers. No, no backdoor entrance. So specials in the dark. What he saw was the opener, of course, with the Zealot, right? But then he saw a bunch of Stalkers. And maybe if it was a bunch of Adepts, he would be a little more suspicious of an Oracle, a Stargate follow-up. Because that sometimes can be the way they like to open and then follow up in that Stargate. The Stalkers actually might be the, the opposite. He might be like, oh, he's going to do some type of aggression. Maybe he's got a Twilight Council with Blink on the way. Or uh, even just a Robo and going into like a Gateway-oriented style. No, it's going to be a Stargate. And we're going to see how surprised Special gets from this. But this constant aggression is really nice for Mana, who's even taking on Marines that should be covered by the Cyclones, but are always such an awkward engagement. Now, with two Cyclones, I think Mana has to actually get out of here. Especially if the one Cyclone is being repaired, and it is by one SCV. Um, but this Oracle, it goes in the main base. It was not anticipated by Special. He had no Viking on the way. It's a Liberator for harassment. Marines did pop out to help out a little bit, and that Oracle was not as much damage as it maybe could have been. But this is just constant. Constant poking and prodding for a Protoss player, and this is this is impressive stuff. I would say usually Mana in the past, uh, and he is, I guess, a little, you know, mismackering here, would just have some severe mismacker going on behind this, and while it'd be all, like, flashy and cool, the substance wouldn't be there. But apparently, this tournament, the substance was there. He he actually has this, you know, macro game going on behind it, and while he was a little late to the third Nexus, his minerals got a little bit high. He got the Nexus, followed up with a Blink and plus one at the same time. And he's on his way to a pretty nice macro game. Manages to keep a seven supply, seven SCV lead, sorry. Uh, worker lead, there we go. Which isn't totally fantastic. You know, you have two mules not working, so it's actually pretty normal. Considering how the Oracles could have played out. I think that's um, actually a nice defense on Special's part. A lot of other players would have uh, died or lost significantly more. A little bit of supply block. Finally, Special shows uh, the weakness, you know. He did mess up occasionally dealing with so much pressure. And they both continue on. The Liberator is already damaged, so it's not going to be able to do too much at all. It at least scouts, though. Third Nexus down. Almost, like, 75% done. So he's going to add his own third CC. Not going to worry so much about his, his stim timing here. He's going to get those tanks to protect him, and the tanks will provide a nice anchor to any push in the future, but that pushes a ways off. Something that Mana's going to be able to see with the Oracles. Uh, unfortunately, loses one, the weak one. Grabs four SCVs, five SCVs. Very annoying when they take care of those SCV building uh, command center, especially. But any of them is really annoying. Oh, look. See? He forgot. He forgot to build this one. This is why it's so... It's such a good use of the Oracle, not just to go for the mineral line, especially when there's no missile turret, but like, hmm. Sometimes it's better to just go for this. So this is a substantial delay on the third racks, by the way. Like, Special is moving out with a tank push, and it's 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 definitely scary. Like, you know, you can't not take this seriously just because it doesn't have stim. But the follow-up is supposed to be quite seamless. There is a chance that the Protoss player just absolutely demolishes this. If they get a surround, if they get good scouting on it and good positioning, if they catch you on siege. Um, yeah, exactly. There you go. Then they can absolutely demolish it. But as long as your macro is going on well behind it, typically we see the Terrans recuperate. It doesn't look so bad. Uh, but Mana decides to take the engagement. He does lose a couple of softers as well as that Phoenix. Um, but was more importantly drop the main with the Cyclones, and this did deal a fair bit of damage. Six probes go down, two SCVs died on the, on the front line here with the tanks, and the medevac is not going to be able to be cleaned up. The Stalkers were taken out of commission, but this counter, there is still a substantial number of Stalkers left over after dealing with the tank pressure, and they grab the other tank. They're going to be able to grab a few SCVs, because Stim is just nowhere close to being done. The Marines cannot chase here. Special is still relying on tanks to protect him, and at this point, I really would think that most Terrans would, would ideally not have to build any more tanks. Um, maybe a couple more because they realized the push could go south, and it certainly did, but there could have been a bunker, there could have been only one more tank that wasn't sniped. Instead, he's going up to... Alright, so he's gonna have... That's his second tank, plus three. He's gonna go up to five tanks in production. 
produced rather I should say um, in this game and I don't know sometimes it's like tanks don't look so good after 10 minutes to 11 minutes right this is a very very aggressive setup for mid game PVT but I I mean it looks quite good the war prism's on the way and it's usually what you have available to you as a Protoss player at nine minutes, so it's surprising to see a proxy gateway, but maybe it won't be scouted. Special has kind of been on the back foot this entire game. Yeah, he did that tank push, but obviously it didn't go so well, and his macro behind it was not at all perfect because, I mean, specifically because of that later barracks. Um, you can see even now his macro is not perfect. He's supposed to have those faster third and fourth gases with the fifth and sixth gases already on the way, and things are just looking great for Mana who never let up on the pressure, took care of all of the counters that could have happened. It was absolutely dominating, GG. Well, I'm starting to understand a little bit more as to why Mana performed so well in this tournament. I might have actually done this in, in the reverse order, by the way, so we're going to actually skip to the, the first game, I suppose. <laughs> in the future, when I do replay casts, I might do, like, you know, whole no spoilers, who's going to win, big shock and all, even though if I, even if I know the, uh, the results. But this was, this was out of my own curiosity as well as just to mix things up as ladder was being a bit punishing for me. So I don't really mind that I, I got that I got it reversed. So as far as we know it, I suppose, having done the map order incorrectly, <laughs> uh, Mana did win that last game. So let's go into what is actually game number one on <laughs> Dreamcatcher. Okay, one pause, get rid of that bar up there. In the bottom right, it is the Blue Protoss Mana. In the top left, the Red Terran Special. And that was a really obnoxious game to watch as a Terran player. I mean, I watched that having played a lot of frustrating TVPs myself. And usually you watch these, these professional Terrans, the TUI, Special, Euthermal, something along those lines, right? And they just don't seem to take as much damage or their responses to the damage taken are always so much smarter or you know well timed whereas I wait too long or you know don't trust myself without medivacs and all that um, but mana just really made it look like special didn't know what he could do uh, I'm sure special knows how to play this matchup and occasionally has his own frustrating experiences with it but he knows what he's supposed to do but just the way that mana was dominating it it looked like special might have walked away from that game just being like, okay, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I was supposed to do, and just thinking on it, what, what could he have done? Um, bunker faster, I think, is is one of them. Um, the cyclone marines didn't actually pair up as well as I think Special was hoping for to protect each other. The stalker still did damage, and because they did damage, the orc got in the main base, and while it didn't get an extreme number of SCVs, it was still a bother. It still delayed that one barracks. I mean, I think just playing a little bit safer might have been the, the key to that game. But Dreamcatcher is a very weird map, one that I don't get to see too often because the tournaments I cast don't have it in its map pool. I play on it and I'm just always confused. I have no idea how I'm supposed to push here, so I'll be playing close attention to how Special takes this map on. Mana, obviously you can play aggressive, you can play macro. Because he hasn't been a top tournament contender, it's been... I don't know, it's, it's been a little difficult trying to keep up with how he was playing. He streams a lot, of course, so if you watch his stream, you probably know exactly um, his mood and mindset and, and way of styles of playing in each matchup, but I don't catch his stream too often, so I usually rely on all the tournaments I cast, but and he got knocked out of BTSL, and he doesn't participate in the Korean leagues. He's not Korean, so... Yeah, I... I it was a big shock to everyone, though. Like, I guess I'm trying to make this sound like I'm excusing myself for not knowing or not realizing Mono is going to be such a boss at Austin, but no one knew. Even if he was performing rather well in online tournaments before Austin, I still think that, that the results that he had would be just absolutely shocking. I don't think anyone went into that tournament saying, you know, don't sleep on Mana, he's really good. There's other people that you know, were more concerned about sleeping on or forgetting they were really, really good. And all those people bombed out pretty early. 
such a weird tournament. It was like being in the Twilight Zone of StarCraft. Just expectations out the window. Anyways. Um, yeah, Stargate versus just a 1-1-1 one, 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 it looks like. Reaper being really annoying. Does get taken out. Did they see the Stargate? It did not. That's that's pretty brutal. Dreamcatcher has a lot of hop-up spots for the Reaper, so I would say it's kind of common for the Reaper on this map to see what the, the tech is, but he just he got outmaneuvered. Uh, Mana guessed correctly where the Reaper is going to go. There's two. There's You can go this path, kind of behind. Or you can go just right up here. It's a hop-hop. But the Stalkers took care of it, and once again, we have Mana opening with Stalkers, so they take care of the Adept, or the Reaper a little easier, sorry. Um... And that, that Oracle could have been a surprise, but with the order now correct, I know that this would have been the first game. This would have been the potential surprise. Because um, I really feel like it's not, as I said, it's not 100% that if you open up a Stalkers, you don't go for a Stargate. But I feel like it's it's kind of common that if you, if I see openings with the Depths, I'm like, eh, this might be a Stargate. When I see openings with Stalkers, I'm like, ah, eh, it's probably a Twilight Council or a Robo. It's just, I'm definitely more inclined either way. And I feel pros are too. But whatever. And the thing is, if you don't scout the, the tech, you gotta assume it's the most dangerous thing possible. And in this case, this early of a game, Oracle is the most dangerous thing possible. So you generally see Terrans, even if they're kind of being fooled by amazing mental gymnastics from the Protoss player, you generally see them put Marines somewhere in the mineral lines. Um, but both games now, he wouldn't, he didn't do that. But he did glimpse what was going on with Special's build. So I mentioned it was a 1 1 1, but more importantly, it is into Banshees. With the Stargate opener, this is sometimes the best answer to it. The Oracle Cast Revelation and the Phoenixes take care of the Banshee really quickly because the Banshee's light. But sometimes, if you get more than two Banshees out and alive, maybe going into a third one, the Oracles suddenly are not reliable for detection, and it can go south for the Protoss player. Uh, here is a little bit awkward, but yeah. This is, this is the easiest time to take care of things. But it was a bit of a distraction. The third base was put to the north. Special knew about that and just sent his units right across. This is some really nice pressure. Because he also is building a bunker right now. Now, if Mana loses this, but doesn't, you know, use any of his army in a bad attempt to save it, I think it's okay. We see this often enough in this matchup. But he is going to try and save it. And now that he's committed his units, he better save it. If he commits the units and still loses and loses a bunch of stalkers, that's when it's really, really, really terrible. But he saves the Nexus. He saves his units. He's going to save that. No, almost save that last stalker. Um, but of course, most importantly, save the Nexus. Now, if I check back in. Oh, okay, hold on. Mana's main base. Oh, another reason why one Banshee at a time is very easy for Portal to deal with is shield batteries. Pretty good unit. Observer is going to pop out, but that's still not a bad number of kills for one Banshee. It is the fact that the other one was not great. Oh, you know what? That didn't even get... I thought it was going to go up to five or six. It only got four. No, that wasn't... That's not a good Banshee. This Banshee's not going to be any better, I don't think. And this Banshee that's still building is not going to be any better, too. Um, but I was going to look back at, at Special's base, and while he does still commit to this, this Banshee tank pressure, he is getting barracks at a very appropriate time, spending his minerals wisely. He got a third CC pretty fast. By being aggressive, he's able to be a little bit greedy, and he probably could have even put his third CC on location, but wasn't going to be that risky. Now, at this time, because the, the Nexus is so low, this next push with Mana being distracted and just not expecting a follow-up push, usually Terrans do one tank push, and then they wait for Sim to do another one. Uh, this might be a very bad trade for Mana. Uh, tanks do focus fire. The Stalkers is the most effective against. Marine's gonna barely take care of the Zealots. Sentry gets blown apart. Bunker's gonna finish. Tank's not gonna go down. I think that Nexus is dead. And the Banshees are still dealing damage. I mean, they're not racking up the kills of like 20, right? But they are doing something here. And this one, where did the Observer go? Did he F2 the Observers? Oh, I think he F2'd. Maybe a little bit? I don't know, but this is... Oh, okay, well, this Banshee's... The most effective one in the straight up just probe losses uh, category. The rest of the Banshees did provide that distraction so that he was able to get the Nexus. Goal complete. Behind the special is on his way to uh, five barracks production. Still getting tanks because he needs that protection. This is this would typically be the Terran's weakest point if special hadn't also traded with the army there too. 11 probes and down for the Banshee died. 
Um, but even still, even knowing that he traded with the army, it's a very scary point for the Terran. They don't have a lot of bio. They don't have upgrades on their bio. If they had transferred off of tanks, they really just have no army. So you go with the tanks. You hope that there's enough of them with enough cover, with enough time bought, that if they do counterattack, if they do have a warp prism with a mortal and six blink stalkers, that you survive. But we know, and, and Special kind of knows too, that that just wouldn't have been the case. Not much here to look at for Mana's army either. Yeah, no, no blink. He went to the double upgrades. He probably thought he was dealing with the pressure so well, he could be a little bit greedy, and I would usually agree with him. It was the second attack that typically doesn't happen that um, caught him off guard the most. And then the the fact that it's it's always the fourth Banshee, isn't it? It's like the first two Banshees are dealt with easily. The third Banshee is like, okay, why would you do that? And the fourth Banshee is just like, okay, this is stupid, but it worked. Feels bad. That That's a phenomenon I experience in TVT as well, and it sucks. <laughs> And when you try to do it, of course, they're always super prepared, right? That's how it goes. I can't say I miss map either. I just confuse, it confuses me. But I do like the way that Special plays it. I might steal the way that he plays it here. It's always so difficult to copy Terrans when they do stuff like this, though, because this is not just your, you know, oh, I'm going to build a bunker and defend and get to five barracks with a starport. Like, you have to both be aggressive, uh, you know, smart aggression. You also have to have that very good macro. So no doubt this would not work if I tried it, but it did take a lot of advantages. You know, the, the map is, it's got a lot of avenues and Mana couldn't cover all of them that early on. And you can set up, you know, without their knowledge. So I can, I can see why this works. And I, I think it's worked really, really well. Mana losing that Nexus and losing his army defending it was just, that's, that's what the real kicker is. So Mana is trying to catch up. That's his job right now. He's trying to send some run buys. He's trying to depend on his upgrades. Sometimes when they have that 2-2 two -two versus 1-1, one -one, it can look like Protoss is just super, super good. But the tanks, I if there's a map in this map pool that I'm really a fan of just continuing to build tanks on, even against Protoss, I think it would be this one. Otherwise, I'm like, eh, tanks, they just get worse and worse. Like, I don't know. Um, but now this, this map has some seriously abusive ledges. So that run by was scouted, so it doesn't deal very much. Colossus do not have range. They do not have the 2-2 two -two upgrades, or at least a plus-two attack upgrades. Charge is barely done in time. But the tanks, you can't do anything with the tanks. Now Liberators join the fray too? I mean, Mana is just absolutely dead. There's no way he's going to survive this game after losing a third base again with such a small army. That's a big old nope. But he's gonna try. I mean, in his mind, he's thinking I got three Colossus going on a fourth one. Maybe he, he, you know, kind of bull rushes me and he makes a mistake. But Special is not gonna try and in the game too haphazardly. He's sieging up his tanks and Liberators and probably gonna add on a Concave of Bio. Concave of Bio? Okay, that was exactly what Mono was hoping would happen, but he still has no way to deal with the Liberators or the tanks. He doesn't have Blink and, well, he does have Charge. He doesn't have as many zealots as he needs. And that's that's that. You typically don't see uh, almost like a mech composition in the game here, but that's what happens, CG. Special takes game number one, actually. But, you know, for all you guys know on YouTube, it's game number two. What is the next map? It's going to be Lost... No. 16 bits, 16 bits. Do. Oopsie, not that one, this one. All right. It's game number three. Sure, why not? And it's on 16-bit. In the bottom left is the Red Terror, and he is special. In the top right, as the Blue Protoss, it is Mana. The chat spam during the series started 10 minutes time hour this for it. What was the spam? Mana... He's been putting finalists at WCS Austin in his stream lately. He shows he was impressed with his performance as well. Well, if you read that interview, he was... 
he wasn't like totally shocked and, um, and awed by his own performance. He said, you know, he practiced really well and ladder was going really well for him. So he knew he was going to do better, but you know, it's still surprised to defeat the people that he did. He was, you know, humble about it for sure. I think he still got the impression that he was proud of himself and he was also proud that he's a bit of the representative of the older StarCraft players, of the guys that come back into the game or, or I guess more accurately have been in the game for a long time but haven't had results in a while. You know, that was kind of his comeback as results wise. He did almost not play StarCraft, I think, and that, he mentioned that in the interview as well, where he was going into Heroes and he was really down on himself. Um, so, you know, it almost was a true comeback, I guess, if he had actually stopped playing StarCraft, but he didn't. So it was just um, a resurgence of results and what a damn good result it was, too, because I mean, people love Mana from his uh, days back in like 2012, and that's all well and good. You got to consider how just much better players are now. I know that's kind of a, a cliche thing to say now, and there's always that joke that a uh, Masters players now could win GSL season one type of thing, but it is definitely true. I think you, I mean, Snoot was winning tournament 2012, right? Do you think he's actually the same exact player that he was in 2012? No, he probably got better along with everyone else. So for Mana to come back against this era of players, I don't know, it's a super sick. And to take a couple of games off of, spoiler alert, Serral in the finals. I mean, that's that's probably the most impressive thing where no one else really has been able to. But anyways, uh, Mana is going for the expand here. Scouts that it's a uh, Reaper opener, but did not stick around long enough to scout that it was a factory. He saw the gases though, I believe, and, and should be able to infer that. Plus if it was a barracks build, second like barracks would have already come down. Uh, Stargate opener, once again, Mana seems to love the Stargate openers. I think as far as styles go, there does seem to be a bit of a divide. Um, and I think this actually, I, I should, hmm, how to say it. There seems to be a divide between non-Koreans and Koreans about the Protoss way to play PvT, but I would say that's because they get to see a lot of Zest, and Zest is doing particularly well lately, and Zest doesn't go for those target openers. He goes for the Twilight Council Robo style of play with, like, mass gateways. So, I don't want to actually name it as stylistic differences, you know, just hard and true facts, as I don't think that's true. I think a lot of Korean Protosses also love opening up with Stargates. But Mana so far in every game has done that, and... Uh, I think special, while well, he's played at least one game in this series, if I hadn't done these things out of order, would figure he loves the Stargate openers. I think the Koreans had a lot of their Brood War skills just translated StarCraft 2. I don't actually think that's true. I think, you know, because if that was true, if mechanics were really going to get them that far, I, like when, when Kespa swapped over, I think you would have seen an even faster... Um, Acclamation, is that the right word? Of the Casper Brood War pros to StarCraft 2. I guess you could say that's because they also had to play the Hybrid League, which is just uh, just absolutely atrocious and, and all that, and that's true, but um, mechanics only get you so far, and it's new mechanics you have to learn anyways. Very different style of game, of style of play. Different hotkeys is like the most basic thing you can point at that it'd be different macro-wise. Um, that I really, really, really do not think the mechanics of those early StarCraft players in 2010 were that good. Were good at all. And then there's the whole argument of it's not about mechanics 100%. There's also a lot about strategy. StarCraft 2 has always been more about strategy than Brood War ever was. Um, I guess in terms of, of what, I guess, your, your, what represents your performance, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, whatever. I think people get what I'm trying to say. I think it's usually agreed upon that StarCraft 2 is more strategy and Brood War is, you know, you can win mechanically in a lot of scenarios where in StarCraft 2 there are a bit more of those obnoxious games where you just get straight up like hard countered or build order loss or, or silly things happen because it's a very fast paced game. Lots of explosions. All that good jazz. Anyway, whole point being, I really don't think the people, the pros in 2010 were that good in StarCraft 2. Uh, but the Phoenix opener was, uh, I guess, the specific choice of the Stargate, so not an Oracle, which might have been a bit of a surprise. But he now knows there's more than one Phoenix, so might want to build those turrets. I mean, Special's been... Okay, yeah. 
Special's been just disregarding business turrets against oracles because he, you know, oracles usually don't try and go in for the SCV kills past their first appearance. Uh, otherwise, they're used for stasis traps and revelation. But against Phoenix, those are always going to be looking for SCV kills throughout the game, as well as being speedy enough to come back and help against Medivac. So you generally want to have a missile turret or two against those. He even recalls the Phoenix. He realized what was going on. Two Medivacs are headed his way. That was faster stim this game. Especially didn't rely on those tanks nearly as much. Swapped over into a barracks very quickly. So stim is uh, going to be done very soon. Combat was already done, but the Phoenix's being recalled was an absolutely fantastic move. They can definitely take a few shots from these Marines as well. The stim isn't done. They take out the Medivacs. And the Marines are all that's left. They'll be able to pick those up with the Graviton Beam, and not too many probes will die. Remember, this is uh, a good defense. Only four probes may be lost while Mana is building up his third base. So that's triple Chrono on the probe production. Six probes, seven probes total. That was a very good hold and just really frustrating, I think, for Terran players when that happens. Because, I mean, the one thing that you can usually rely on is that the Phoenixes are showing themselves as being obnoxious little buzzing bees, that at least they won't be guarding their main. At least until, until a bit later when they have more stalkers, right? The whole idea is that you're supposed to be able to kind of surprise them, and also because there's no revelation. And instead, Mana read that so perfectly and recalled to the perfect location, it just must feel bad for Special, who's not looking to be in a terrible spot supply-wise right now, but it is scary how much momentum can can be lost for Terran when they have openers like this. You know, right now, it's 20 armor supply lead, but it's certainly not all on the front lines, right? The army was pulled forward for Mana to deal with the front attack, so there's nothing here to deal with the Widow Mine drop instead of a cannon, but a cannon might be enough help. Oh, he didn't actually pull the probes that quickly! Okay, 13. Uh, not the absolute worst damage, I guess, that Mana could have taken, but not, not great either. Definitely good for Special to do that. Unfortunately, Special lost his army on the front line, so it was a bit of a give and take. There goes the Chrono into the Nexus. And replenish those probes. He did, uh, dipping down below the Terran's SCV count when they have a third base already set up. That's, that's not great for a Protoss usually, but the Chrono's gonna go in here. He saved most, if not all, of his army in these engagements. So it's been a steady climb for him where his special, of course, has lost out more resources. You can see right there. And um, Mana's not gonna have to worry so much about the next, like, the 45 seconds to a minute right here, right now, is a time where he can do this. He knows that Special is going to kind of take a chill pill. Any further drops are in danger of just losing him too much army supply and potentially allowing Mana to counter. So it's not something that Mana can, like, bet a thousand dollars on that that's the case. Because what if Special is just trying to be relentlessly aggressive? Mana has no idea. He's no way of telling that's happening. Um, it does end up being a fantastic call. Special is just chilling back at home, and Mana can get these upgrades, get those probes, and maybe even go for a fourth base. Now, the Phoenixes do eventually want to come back out, I feel. Um, I actually, I guess the Observer is fine enough, but because there was no Oracle, because the Observer was, you know, later in terms of um, just the build order that they chose, that was, I think, a bit dangerous. Is the Observer going to see a bit of a lack of army? No, it can't. This was her. It's guarding from that information. But the army is not moved anywhere except into the main. Phoenixes will come forward now, and those would be a bit better. They're going to pick up the Widow Mines, it seems. Yeah. This is one Phoenix for it, and the Observer gets sniped, but... Warp Prism goes into the back. Vikings were on patrol, but we're a little late. Do at least take out the Warp Prism, so this shouldn't do... Uh, there shouldn't be a constant thorn in special side. Eight SCVs is really not too shabby for... The Zealots, yeah, it definitely sucks he lost the Warp Prism. Nine SCVs and just a lot of time bought. I think this is the kind of scenario where you really got to look at how much the Terran um, isn't doing when they respond to things like that. Special does manage to have a drop, and this is where the really good Terrans show their skills when they defend against the harassment of the Protoss and do a bunch of their own drops. But even that was not very impressive. It was dealt with rather easily, and Mana should feel... I think he should feel safe enough to take a fourth base once he has the minerals. Um, his upgrades are finishing up. He's got... Uh, what, does he have Colossus? Yeah, he's one Colossus. He's actually going to Disruptors, which I think is interesting. I would love if the fake Colossus uh, build kind of came back out, but... Um, 
I don't think it's it's really a thing again. It's almost like Rana's doing that thing where he goes for one Colossus and you would skip Xanthermal Lance, you would go into a, a Mortals, but uh, he does have Xanthermal Lance, yet he only has one Colossus. Well, that one Colossus is going to be thankful. Disruptors are definitely tricky to deal with, but Special is going to try to avoid them for now. Just a big Doom drop into that natural base, third base, whatever it was. Uh, we'll lose a couple medevacs, but the Phoenixes cannot take on that much, and Special has a lot of Vikings. He went the Viking path to deal with what he expected to be Colossus. You get enough Vikings, and they will take care of both Colossus and Phoenix. He gets the Nexus, but he does lose the army that was waiting in the in the front, and Mana is getting that fourth base behind. I think this is the same kind of situation that I was talking about earlier, where like, hey, the damage is okay, but that third base is up, and that's where the Corona's gonna go back into the probes. The economy is is getting hurt, for sure. Mana is taking damage, but because he's continuing to expand, because he's keeping a cool head and saving a lot of his army, he still has a game here. I don't even say like a, maybe a good game, maybe a poor game, but he definitely has a game here. Disruptor is being, I think, the biggest trick of this game, too. Like, Special's going on to four bases himself, all right? So that's four bases to three. Special absolutely has a good game going on here. His upgrades really aren't that bad either. He's going to have 2-2 two -two against Mana's 2-2. Two -two. But the Disruptors are such a tricky thing to deal with. Disruptors, even if you do scout them, if you realize what they're doing, God forbid you don't realize they're going for Disruptors. That's the worst. Um, but if you do know what they're doing, they can be very difficult to deal with. It. Oh, my God! Oh, okay, I don't think he realized it was Disruptors. Um... Now he's just gonna recall out. He's like, oh, that was good enough. Saves every single unit. Well, not that, not that poor century. Sorry, buddy, you're dead. Oh, that was a couple good disruptor shots. But disruptors, yeah, like you can try your best to split away from them when they're in the counts of two or three. But when the count, the count grows to four or five, six, there's just not really any splitting. <laughs> the the attacks are gonna be continuous. So this is usually where you need just legitimately a surround. Or you need a high number of liberators to just keep the disruptors at arm's length. But Special never really went into liberators. In fact, he went into those Vikings, right? So Mana did kind of successfully bait Special. Um, actually, that, that, was a, that was a decent amount of liberators, but the army on the ground is not good enough, so... Regardless of that, the disruptors just absolutely pummel everything. The Liberators, while they are in higher number than I anticipated, that was not such a bad number to see. It was like five or something like that. They don't have range and they only have the plus one ship weapon. So you still saw the Protoss army kind of bully through, especially when the bio is taken out by the Disruptors like that. If they have range, if they have plus two and they're set up preemptively, I don't think the Disruptors, I don't think the Protoss army does what it just did. He's a... Actually, very good that, that Special was even able to transition into Liberators when he did. Realizing he didn't need a Viking count to be that high. Hasn't been making them for some time. But those Disruptors hit a large portion of the army. They also had a very important portion of the army. They got a lot of those ghosts there. Very expensive units. Special is also dropping in that... Whatever base it is now, I guess. He's gonna kill it again, too. But he's got a major problem in dealing with this army. He doesn't really have a strong response unless, again, he gets up to a higher number of liberators. Ideally, with either plus two or with range. And uh, he's not on his way to either one. He's trying to replenish the bio army that's going to be faster. That's going to be something you need, of course. And because he's replenishing that constantly with these disruptor hits, he's not able to afford every technology that he would want, despite being on four bases. But kudos to Special is continuing to try and drop, trying to draw him out of position. He grabbed the Nexus twice in a couple of probes, but unfortunately, I don't think he's really matching the damage as Mana is taking huge leaps in terms of that army supply. Drop now officially cleaned up. Looks like Mana doesn't want to risk uh, not paying attention, perhaps, on the front line. Look, he even lost his Warp Prism. I think that's something that every race has to deal with at some point you don't want to be in a very good position dealing with a couple of drops and not set your storms down and not stim your army that feels just super bad so mana does the perhaps a wise thing and, and just backs off if he does not have his trigger finger ready on the disruptors this army is is going to melt to marauders and liberators so he does have to be 100 percent focused on the army when it happens um, but he just gives up on this base, it looks like. <laughs> He's gonna take this one instead. He still manages to keep his, his probe count fairly high, 57. That's a decent amount. 
Special got a fifth base behind this with 64 SCVs and has had that breathing room to get up to a good number of Liberators. He did start his 3-3 for his bio and is now onto his plus two ship weapons, but because he went for double reactor with the Vikings and then choosing not to go for Tech Lab later on for the Liberators, he does not have range. Every time his Liberators have to re-siege somewhere is a chance the Stalkers get one or two picked off and are able to blink back. Didn't announce my sub. Sorry, Muku. Thank you for the, the resub, whatever it is. How can I have a replay? Yeah, thank you for linking that, C-Knuckle. Oh, no, God, no. It's the Terran fallacy. I think it, uh, it happened to this matchup more than any. We're like, you think you're winning. You think you're doing a good job against the Protoss. or on the ropes because you have so many Libra or something like that. And you just rush into storms. And you rush into disruptors. And that... That's what that looked like right there. He thought he was in an okay position to chase, and it's just not the case. <laughs> oh, so much, and now loses the planetary, loses the rest of his army, loses the drop. Special was almost on his way back to having a comfortable position, one where he was, maybe not comfortable, I shouldn't say comfortable, but one where he was at least, um, you know, head above water. And then in just five, ten seconds, he got snatched by a shark and is being eaten up alive right now. There it is. Thank you for that two-month resub, Muku. Twitch app is real media player 2018. <laughs> mm. Special is still on four bases. I kind of have to remind myself of that because it is 16 bit. We have this back base, but um, because he's been on the same four bases for so long, he's starting to mine out. Whereas Mana, because he lost the space, it would have still have a lot of minerals and he doesn't even retake. He takes this one. But the final blow might just be coming in here. 30 armor slightly for Mana. The concave is, is probably one of the better ones Special could possibly have, and he has the defensive of Planetary, but his army still gets taken out in a decent rate. You know, Mana still has that 10, 20 army supply lead. That was going to be Special's best defense. Um, you know, I'm sure he's glad Mana tried to push the issue, but is it enough if you're losing that fifth base Planetary? Does he even realize... Oh, gets a couple of Stalkers. It's always nice. He does not realize the fifth has been taken at a fresh new base, and Mana has gotten back up to 65 probes. He scans the army, sees a Colossus still in the, in the mix. Did that thing just never die? Oh, no. Okay. He made it, but still only one Colossus at a time. Um, and now he doesn't really have an answer for the Colossus. Uh, mass Liberator can be an answer for everything, let's be real, but he doesn't have that and he doesn't have any Vikings. Double dropped, headed towards what he's hoping, another vulnerable fifth base. Go away, Windows. But it's just a couple of long distance mining probes. I should have mentioned that the there's like eight probes that you shouldn't really account in the probe. Total probes, because they've been long distance mining, but... Man, Special is really trying to make this a game. Every other Terran, I feel, would have just given up, right? They would have taken the bad engagements against the Disruptors. They wouldn't have done the drops while everything was happening um, with some decent macro behind it. They just would have uh, died. But Special is making a game out of it because he is pushing the issue with the drops. Every time it looks like he's about to take too much damage, he does something in return. And because of that, he's managed to keep his head above water. I'm going to keep using that analogy because it's kind of the perfect one. I guess he's kicked the shark in the nose and the shark ran away, but it's it's still, still hovering and his legs like been bitten off too. So it's not a great situation for special, but he's staying afloat. I will say that if at any point special like, you know, versus like a base raid happens, that's where the disruptors are or maybe the weaker point of uh, Mana's army because they need to be kind of cared for. You can't be not paying attention and lose three of them. That would be devastating. Uh, that's where a special could absolutely come back into this game, and he gets another Nexus snipe on a pretty important fourth base. He's got a drop in the main here that maybe could have gone for the Disruptor, or maybe for a tech structure is unable to do so. He'd rather have that live. A lot of dead space in the corners, a 16-bit. Oh, no. Oh, no! Oh, even losing that one medevac is harsh, because it was the full one. Four medevacs, or three medevacs full, sorry, would have been... Quite the Nexus sniping force, too, is like, ah, it's just a little bit less. Special has lifted his main command center over, and this game is pretty damn good. I gotta say, this must be the game everyone was talking about. Mana, so dealing with the drops, is finally gonna clean this one up. No, not quite. Single Tempest would help out, or maybe building a couple of Phoenix again would help out. The Special has, has all of his medevacs dropping, nothing to heal their army over here, and he was caught out of position, not Siege. So Mana takes a pretty damn good fight. 
but is still being dropped off to another new base. A can at least went down, so he saves 300 minerals. And I mean, Mana is is keeping that 20 armor supply lead, but every single time it looks, it's, it's almost, it's like, okay, almost he wasn't paying attention. Almost he was the one that was caught off guard or caught in a terrible spot. I'm surprised he also hasn't lost more probes than he has. Like, I guess he's lost 15 in the last couple of minutes since I mentioned it. But with the base knights going down, they've, uh, the probes have managed to stay alive, I suppose. There's really nothing scouting back here now. There used to be like an assimilator on a pylon and stuff, but nothing at all here. Special has really flipped the uh, table too on on who has control over the map, but Mana is, is getting a little tired of it, and he's gonna try and and go for the throat once again. Takes out the single liberator. He does have a planetary to deal with, but a lot of this army is stemmed. The disruptor's looking for that juicy hit. Doesn't quite find it. Another liberator taken out without getting a single shot off from the disruptors. There's no answer for it. Even if he had a, a good concave, that's just weak units at this point. And they both have some pretty substantial upgrades. The Stalkers could probably take on the army even without the help of the Disruptors. Although obviously the Disruptors would be the most helpful. This is a very oversaturated base. This might be where the probe count starts to really go down. The main base is also being attacked, but that's going to be cleaned up. That is not a great sign as he does get that snipe on the main command center. Mana will lose the army, however. And this is the first time, I believe, in quite some time that Mana has been even on army supply things are getting really scrappy another base goes down and uh the pickup is good stalkers are not in position to take this out no they are not and we finally have high templars making their way into things it's been such a hectic game that i actually have just not even thought about the ways that mana could have progressed his, his technology i was thinking tempest maybe you're bringing up the phoenix to help out with the drops but of course feedbacks would also be helpful Although I don't think at any point the medevacs have been full on energy. There's just been so much action happening. A feedback would kill, for instance, this one. Or the soccer will. Oh my god. Or not. Or not. Ugh. This is, uh, huh. Very tenuous position. We have special, I think, I think it was this game. I didn't make a note of it, though. He had a ghost academy, like, a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, it was just a, a matter of actually being able to use it. Um, you don't usually want ghosts that quickly if they really are going into Colossus, and, and ghosts don't necessarily help that much against disruptors, but in general, EMP is a good spell, and eventually will you should eventually have to deal with Archons and Storm. So he's adding on that uh, tertiary tech, I guess you can say. But this base was, uh, it was almost so clever. It was almost so damn good. <laughs> It came up on location when he was really pressuring Mana, but Mana just instantly snaps back. Those 18 SCDs gets two bases, one forming a planetary super expensive loss there. And Special is down to two, uh, two orbitals? One, two, yeah, two orbitals and a planetary at his fourth. Special has got to take the best fight possible. He's dodging and weaving or trying his best to do so, but he's not actually sniping the disruptors in turn. Oh, he does finally get that one, but it got more than a couple shots off in this game. He needs a big con key, he needs a couple of good EMPs, and maybe even the Liberators getting more than just a single shot off would be super ideal. But now I'm looking at the mass amount of charge lots here, and the EMPs don't really hit the heart of them. There's no wood of mine to help take care of it either, and the upgrades are even, so they just absolutely slaughter the army. Disrupt their hate is good over to the right side. And that, that must be it. Yeah, GG. Well, that was, that was the best game, yeah. And I, I can see why people say that was the best game of the tournament, too, because the tournament had a lot of three zeros. My pros players don't show their base with enough cannons. Well, in that game, there's too much going on. I mean, in our own games, those measly peasants down in the Masters below leagues, even GM below, right? Not pros. We, we give each other a lot of time to come back, a lot of time to build banks, whereas you get games like these and they're just too good to let that happen. Ukraine's dominate a lot more than they do these days. In the beginning of 2010, I don't think that's true. That has to be a cause of the Brood War skills. I mean, look at the old gods that not have back already, but I think pros are a lot better now than 2010. Um, okay, well, a couple things that I sect. I think they are better than late 2014 to present. I think Serral is is probably the biggest indicator of that with how much he's pushed the MMR. Um, and I think that you are wrong about them dominating as much or more 
in those 2010 periods because you know i want to specify here in our discussion that i was talking about like early 2010 by late 2010 you really had a lot more like the teams were really starting to work together you had people figuring out the metas wings of liberty was no longer the super comical thing where mass thor was legitimate um you know one base builds were, were no longer the standard it's very different in that year but in the beginning of 2010 that's when you had a lot of foreigners actually go over to korea and do fairly well so no i don't think the i don't think that's true <clears throat> they would know how to build a computer under three hundred dollars Oh, you want to build a computer for under three hundred dollars? It's going to be a pretty low-range computer, low-end computer. Duo isn't dominating. Okay, but so that wasn't really the the conversation we were having, was it? You said the Koreans are dominating a lot more than they do these days, and I said, no, that's not the case in early 2010. You had even farther runs from foreigners in the early 2010. Anyways. In internal talking like beta early? No, I'm talking to like like Jinro and Idro getting f Jinro and Idra getting far in tournaments like 2010. Because it came out in July. I don't think I ever mentioned any months. I just said, well, I guess I was saying early 2010. You're right. I should be saying early of the first year that it was released. But now you're just being, I think, a little pedantic. Anyways, let's get into the last game here. As things are leading now with Mana or Protoss. And things could end here if you don't know how the series goes and haven't figured it out by the times that I mentioned it in the cast. <laughs> Somehow. And in the top right on Loss of Fallon, it is the Red Terran special. Us, it is Mana. I mean, you don't have to shut up. I just, I think it's, it's actually kind of an interesting conversation in and of itself as to why, why didn't these guys from Brood War immediately translate their skills over into StarCraft II and absolutely dominate? You could say for some like Boxer and Nada that they were already on their way out from Brood War, but their mechanics still must be pretty damn good, right? I think you also have to talk about that, you know, Brood War, they also got better flash mechanics much better than Nada's mechanics probably ever were. Don't quote me on that, though, because I don't know Broodwar that well, but I imagine that's going to be the case, even though Nada was also known to be a very you know, good macro machine. So just continual improvements all over the place in gaming. Not just in StarCraft 2, not just in StarCraft in general, but all over the place. Um, but like 4GG, I think, came... Oh, no, actually, he, he took a break. He, he went to military service, didn't he? No, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He went to military service when he did StarCraft 2. Yeah, didn't, didn't 4GG come, like, kind of immediately from Brood War in StarCraft 2? He didn't really dominate. He did well, but I just, I don't know if it was dominating. Compared to the, the other guys. Compared to the B-teamers from Brood War that would play StarCraft 2. Well, anyways. Like, Nest T. Why did Nest T, of all people, become the best... Because he was strategically very, very good, but not mechanically good. A lot of people in those early days were mechanically amazing. 
Anyways, enough about that talk. Enough about that conversation. Um, this could be the last game. And... Well, Special had a, a really fantastic game in the last 16-bit. Uh, that was really quite a game. Mana has... You know, this is the tournament that he... He ate well, he slept well, he got loves and kisses from his girlfriend or something like that, and and just was he's not making the same mistakes that Mana used to. Mana used to be this player, and maybe he goes back to it. Maybe this is just kind of like the one time that things go really well for him. I don't know. We'll see in the next tournament. Um, or in Challenger, actually, which is happening right now. But he used to be a player that you would see glimpses of how good he could be when he was dying. <laughs> He would have okay games, but then he would, you know, crumble hard against multi-pronged aggression from Terran, and then... And then he would, um, in the last ditch effort, kind of go Super Saiyan and have, like, really cool micro, really cool decision making, but it was... It was too late, basically. And I don't know what changed here, but he's making the right decisions and the right moves, and that last game just really was a great example of that. 22, 24 minutes, whatever, of just non-stop action, and... He didn't make the game-ending move on his part. He didn't lose because he made a bad decision. He won because all the decisions were uh, at least better than specials. Rain and Hulk are good examples for the Brood War better than Circle of Two. Um, I don't quite understand what you mean by good examples for that. Um, this early pressure, by the way, was just completely circumvented uh, by Special because he he actually had his command center finish. He didn't have to bother defending it. So it was more like, no, you come here to me if you're going to do anything at all. Um, then he had a Cyclone. He's going to get another Cyclone. So he might see a Cyclone drop or a Cyclone push to the front. As he realizes, he scouts the Reaper. You know, this is not something super committed. In fact, it's going to be a Stargate. Did you see that Stargate? Okay, he did. He had gotten the scout prior. Um, we had Mana go for one, Phoenix open, rest have been Oracles, once again, Oracle here. Now, if the- oh, kind of a sneaky, sneaky Banshee attack. If the Cyclones opt to go for an aggressive push of any sort, then the Oracles do a lot of damage. So, Special's actually gonna keep both of them at home. I would say often we see, like, one defensively, and then you go and do, you know, better things, but Special has gotten two Cyclones defensively twice. I mean, they end up helping in, in some ways. They're not, like, useless units to get two of, but... Yeah, and he's gonna go for fast third, too. So I think having two Cyclones is probably the safest thing he can do. As he's also not just going for third CC, he's going for Banshees, which, you know, sometimes they don't look very powerful. They do look like just simple harassment units. So gotta keep it safe. Also has that bunker. No tanks here. Just everything into those Banshees for now. Maybe he'll add tanks later on as he's getting a tech lab on his factory. I'll pay attention to that. Oracle's will be able to get the sights on everything, ideally, that Special is doing, but that's why he built the starport way over there. The Oracles will see this little, you know, hubbub of uh, structures and think the starport's maybe over there or over there. Um, they'll see how fast the third CC is, but they don't see the starport. They didn't check far enough to be suspicious of where that starport was, and of course they do not see that it is Banshees. Double Forge. Alright, he saw a third CC, so he's thinking he can get away with some greed. We saw this on uh, Dreamcatcher, which I almost called Terraform. And Mana was caught by surprise multiple times by tank pushes, but there's not really that immediate tank push with the Banshees this game. The tanks had come a little bit later. In fact, he just took out the Cyclones with the Banshees, which is really nice. And he didn't depend on Phoenix Oracle to deal with the Banshee. He went quicker into a Robo and got an Observer with Stalkers. That Banshee looked really, really quite lame. Mana certainly learning from that Dreamcatcher game. It's an amazing defense and should be thinking, okay, what's what's going to come next? Oracle should have scouted this. I want to say that's that's where maybe that would be the perfect learning experience for Mana, is learning that the, the follow-up pushed on the way, but, and he should be scouting for it, but he should still be able to respond to it. I mean, he's got a decent number of units. He's going to have a single Phoenix uplift that one tank. It's on a big push, and if you can stop 
eight before the bunkers get up, then I think it's actually not a big deal um, too much at all. But he did once again miss the, the attack in transit, and that kind of sucks. Banshee in the main base is going to be taken out by the Phoenix eventually, and Shield Battery is going to make sure that not a lot of probes go down. Some probes went down over here. The bunkers are on their way. They're very, very least covering the tank, and the Phoenix is busy dealing with the Banshee. So it's not over here lifting another tank that would have been a little bit more helpful, but it looks like everything combined together, Oracles especially, is going to be taken out. Nexus barely took any damage. He managed to save a lot of his army, or what was left of it, I guess. Um, and let the Oracles do the rest of the work. He's got double upgrades to deal with the Banshees. This one's not doing too much either. In special, he has a good economy. He's up at 60 SCVs and 66 probes. It's pretty good for, for Terran. He um, is still waiting on those upgrades. He's still waiting on what you know makes Terran's mid-game look pretty good. So we'll see if he goes for the follow-up tank push. Mono is also paying close attention to that. He's not going to. Just see just tanks back at home. They have a Raven now coming out from the tech lab. This can be very useful. Anti-armor missile should not be undervalued just because its damage was decreased. Especially against Protoss. And, um... Interference mages against Protoss can be very useful, too. I would say we typically don't see it, though. Not unless there's ZTs in play, so... I I'm curious to uh, see how special uses it. They're also kind of hard units to... to make work. Um, to control. The server is going to move a little bit away from the Mesa Turret. That's why it moved. Uh, Oracles come in and deny that Mesa Turret and might just go for a tech lab or something like that. Two Oracles are usually not too scary for it and they actually just attack buildings. So not going to be able to deny Stim or something extreme like that. But they did distract special. A lot of the army was on in the main instead of protecting the tanks. There could have been a dozen more Marines protecting those things. Two tanks go down. Twelve SCVs go down. And that was not too shabby of a push for Mana, who still comes out ahead in the army supply. Has 2-2 two, two on the way, going into that storm now as well. And knows he isn't being dropped. That was all of Special's army. He saw Raven, so after seeing Banshee, then Raven, you gotta figure the medevacs aren't gonna be out somewhere. They just haven't seen them. They're probably just still producing, which is exactly the case. And Mana's able to take control of this map. He's got a Warp Prism now, and he might wait for his 2-2 two, two and Storm. To do the push, um, I definitely wouldn't mind if he did that. Wouldn't mind it at all. I guess I wouldn't mind if he also just backed off. He's getting a fourth base. He's not going to be able to break. It might be, it might be a bad idea to try and break this. He might be able to break it, maybe, especially if storm was done. But you know, walls definitely difficult to deal with. A little bit of a choke, so one tank adding that splash damage. Like, yeah, that's. That's something you're going to let the Terran feel at ease first. Have them salvage those bunkers. Think that they're good to, good to go. And then, and then you show up with the upgrades in the storm and you make them look silly. Which I fear is exactly what's going to happen. I mean, Special's army supply is not too bad, but his upgrades have fallen significantly behind. That's um, probably a conscious choice. Well, I don't know about that, actually. His armory is done. We do see a lot of Terrans uh, delay those two too, but oh my god! Oh, the storm was almost perfect! It looks like he maybe... Did he lose the Warp Prism for it? I think he did lose the Warp Prism for it. Or something happened there, but... The storm hit the army as it was retreating. It still did not kill the army. A lot of Marines with low health, but still alive, and Marauders will soak a couple of storms. Anti-Iron Missile hit, and Mana... Went from an almost beautiful engagement to being on the ropes here. He's gonna lose his fourth base. And while Special cannot push into that many storms, losing the fourth base is a very good grab. He finally started his 2 2 while that was all happening as well. Tries to go into the main base, but there are a couple of stalkers waiting. They don't have Blink, but he doesn't know that. And, um, he knows the feedbacks are on his tails too, so. He's gonna get out of there. He's gonna get out of there. Special on his way to fourth base. Uh, nothing he can do about the upgrade disadvantage, and Mana, I think, would be in a good position still to just add on the 3 3. Yeah, he's gonna do that. It's <laughs> it's something that you should add on, especially if you're clicking on the units and seeing that they're still 1-1. Like, having this substantial of an upgrade lead is really, really good for the type of army Mana is going for. So, even if you lost your fourth base, that's a worthwhile investment. Storm is approaching, and Special does not have a Ghost Academy. He wanted just a, a supreme number of units, and especially a lot of Marauders, but his units were so weak from earlier engagements that that portion of the army just absolutely gets obliterated. This army 
not even micro I think he just realized, wait, do I just lose here? And just let everything fall. Or maybe he was microing the drops away from a couple stalkers. That was probably the case, but will this drop make up for the damage he's going to take here? Liberator sieges up and there's nothing to deal with the Liberator. No war prism on the front line either. Oh, there's one kind of close. <clears throat> I guess the third base is saved, but that fourth was canceled. 15 SCVs went down and the nine probes. Drop is cleaned up and fourth base is on the way again for Mana. Who's just gonna go into the natural? Can't go into the third one of the natural. And Liberator saves the day, Liberators. Sorry, they're like sisters there. They save the day very temporarily. They're about to have plus one, but Special does not have that substantial army count on the ground to, to hold on to complement them. The only reason the Liberators are working is the low number of stalkers, you know, first and foremost, but also the uh, terrain that they've been taking advantage of. But even as they try and protect the SCV line, Mon just throws bodies at it anyways. This is 16 SCVs now. Gonna lose his third base, and Special is gonna lose this series. 3-3 is also closing in, so Mono will once again have that upgrade lead in case things did get a bit more even on the army supply. It really isn't even. <laughs> Not with those upgrades. Even without the storm. You know, he's finally taking care of the storms just by allowing Mana to expend them, but now he's got to deal with Archons. So. That's going to be it. Mana, just, this is not the same Mana I would be thinking of when he, he started his role on, in Austin. I was thinking of the mana that made poor decisions in the mid game and couldn't keep up with a macro even when he got into good positions. This guy is very different. This guy was keeping up, making the right decisions, macroing, remember to place down his expansions at correct times and finding all the weaknesses of the Terran without looking necessarily that abusive. I mean, it wasn't necessarily, you know, that War Prism found its way in and warped in 12 DTs and we all, you know, feel pain and despair for that. No, it was like smart use of of scouting and, and stalkers and that's the way I really love to see Protoss played. I think it's still frustrating as a Terran because you see a bunch of gateway units with superior upgrades and you feel overwhelmed and you know that sucks but as a spectator it's much better than seeing Son of Colossus or you know purely relying on storms. But that's it for the cast. I might do a, a more Austin replays later, but this was uh, apparently the best series of Austin. There weren't very many good series. Such a weird, weird, weird tournament. So, um, you know, don't keep your hopes high for that, but it might be happening. No WCS is happening right now, and I might just end the stream here. Um, I did want to play Final Fantasy IX, but...